Hey, hey, what is up? Ruben Cueto here for Creativity Bridge. I hope all is well in your part of the world. Our previous lesson focused on improving our perception skills by using the drawing strategies of axis lines and negative space. And hopefully you're finding improvement in your drawings, but if you feel your drawings aren't quite where you want them to be yet, please don't stress out. Being relaxed and focused is key in developing our perception skills. And also remember the name of our current unit of study. It's perception and drawing. For the beginning artist, perception must be developed before we develop our drawing skills. And while it's true we are drawing, these exercises are designed to be perception exercises, not works of magnificent art. Also remember, as developing artists, we are in this for the long game, meaning we understand we will be making mistakes, but we must get our bad drawings out of our system for us to reach the skill levels we desire. Everyone you know who draws well has already made more mistakes than you have but we've now made the decision to strive for something higher and that's a cool thing. So we're gonna expand our skills here by examining a visual strategy most artists develop naturally, but anyone can learn. So all right, let's go ahead and get that party started right. To purchase a drawing task for this lesson, go to creativitybridge.com and click on the upper menu. There you can click on our first unit perception and drawing and go down to our current assignment alignment guides. Click on the purchase lesson PDF button and there you can click on I want this. The skill we'll be focusing on in this lesson is vertical and horizontal alignment. Now vertical and horizontal alignment is something artists naturally look for when they're drawing. This is the process of comparing the location of one object relative to the position of others. And so what I mean by that is let's say we have an object that's right here and we have another object down here. What we do is we use the position of one object to figure out where the other one's gonna be using horizontal and vertical alignment, okay? By doing this, the artist will constantly check the development of their drawing to ensure its accuracy. People with drawing experience constantly do this, so much so that it becomes second nature and they don't even notice that they're doing it. But this is a habit everyone can develop. So we'll do this by having printed guides superimposed over our drawings to help us develop our location skills. We'll then slowly remove the guides to the point where we don't need them anymore. The first guide system we'll use is superimposed grids on top of our images. The vertical and horizontal lines in the grid act like visual training wheels, developing our alignment skills, and they'll force us to be mindful of all the alignments occurring in the drawing along an X and Y axis. The key to grid drawing is to eventually remove these grids, we will increase the size of the grid cell to the point where we eventually don't need them anymore. And the perimeter of the image itself is just one big grid cell. So let's examine our first drawing task. Remember, this task along with all the tasks shown in this video are included in the lesson PDF and is available at the Creativity Bridge website. So here's the first of the five drawing tasks available on our website, creativitybridge.com that correspond with this lesson. It's the first image of an elephant on a grid. And so what we have here is we have the pre-printed uh, grid on top of the image. And what I've done already is I've numbered these lines one through 15 going across the top and the bottom and one through 13 horizontally on both sides here. And that's gonna really help me out with the image here. Let me just go ahead and do that real quick. I'll just do a few of these lines here to get me started making sure that I don't skip any because that would be oh so embarrassing. All right, so let's just go ahead and do that for right now. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and start with this area right here and work my way eastward across the drawing. So I wanna find where the drawing intersects with the grid and that's gonna be really important when we're dealing with grid drawings. We wanna find where the drawing is touching the grid and that helps us connect everything. It's basically gonna become a very large connect the dots kind of assignment here. So looking at this point right here where this side of the tail is touching um, horizontal nine, I notice that it's almost at the halfway point between here and vertical one. So I'm gonna find that on my drawing a little bit to the left. So I'm gonna guess that the drawing of the tail touches here and for eight, it's not quite above it, it's slightly to the right. So now I'm gonna draw this line here, it curves, inward and it goes like that okay so that's going to be approach our approach to the drawing cell by cell step by step connecting the dots 
and getting everything down. Now it's gonna take us a while to get this done, but I think if we take this approach, we should be okay. Now let's go ahead and continue here. See how this line is starting to curve to the right here, and that this point is slightly to the right of the midpoint. So I'm gonna find that around here, and that should work out okay as the tail starts to slightly turn to the right. Here at this point, the line is right below this intersection of one and six, about here. Again, connecting the dots. Here at this point, this line is to the right of one. So that's making sense so far. And so that's what we wanna do. We just wanna go step by step on this very um, complex drawing, simplifying it for us and figuring out where everything should go. I see here on this line, it's not one smooth line. It has that little bit of a bump right there. You see that? So I'm gonna guess that that line direction change is gonna happen here and then continue this way. Above horizontal four, this direction continues, but at this point, it starts to slightly change direction of line. There and there. And then all the way up to horizontal two, which is around here. So I think so far we're okay, and this part looks like it's correct. Now let's go ahead and work our way down. The tail actually drops below horizontal line nine, reaching almost a 10. So it curves this way toward the right, like this. And then there's those lines here. Though, you know what? I really shouldn't worry about the lines in the interior. I wanna do the perimeter of the drawing first. I wanna make sure that everything is contained exactly where it should be, and then I can worry about the details. You don't wanna start drawing the details only to find out that you've misplaced something. So now that I have that, I notice that the outside part of this tail swings to the slightly to the right of one and swings back this way to here. And then we need to remember the previous lesson about negative space. If you can see, it's really, really small, but if you have the printed image in front of you, you'll see this tiny little negative space right there. That to me looks like the state of Nevada. See that shape? A holler to the silver state. And then at this point, we wanna make sure that this line, actually this should be a little bit more to the left. There we go. And at this point, it comes up, goes like this. See right here, it's slightly to the left. So I think we're okay here. Now, one of the things that I should mention too when you're drawing is um, the importance of the tip of your pencil. Now I'm using a mechanical pencil, as you can see. If you're using a wooden pencil, that's perfectly fine. But please try your best to keep that pencil point sharp. And the reason we wanna keep the pencil point sharp is because if the pencil lead starts to get a little bit like dull, you know, and worn, that line is gonna become wider and wider, okay? And for drawings with a lot of detail and a lot of precision, you wanna make sure that your line is clean and sharp. So if you're drawing a lot and you're not sharpening your pencil, you really need to be mindful of that because you'll find that the width of the line, for, especially for stuff like this, will make an impact on its appearance. All right, so now, see this negative space right here, that little kind of hook shape right here? I'm going to guess that it goes like this. And so far, I think we're okay. So I've got the beginning of this sequence of this line that drops down this way all the way down to here to four. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to number these bottom lines like I should have before. And I notice that this bottom part is going to be down here. This part is going to be close to the intersection here. And it consists of a line that comes forward goes like this and swings back this way. So now I know that this line starts here, ends here, and I can work my way up, I can work my way down. I'm gonna work my way up and hopefully everything will be okay. Taking the same process, let's look at where horizontal 12 is right there. Slightly to the right between three and four around here. And then like I've mentioned before in previous lessons, we're doing a lot of guessing, but my guess is that you guys are improving your guessing skills, all right? Um, when you're starting to draw, our lines are a little bit tentative. I'm not sure where they're supposed to go, but the more you do this, you're gonna find that your line are gonna become more confident because you're developing the skill like an archer, right? Like a basketball player. 
All right, so that line works okay. So that looks pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and continue where I left off and work my way toward the top and try to develop this. Um, again, I wanna make sure that I know where the drawing is touching the grid, the pre-printed grid, because that's really gonna help me figure out where things go and make sure that I don't mess up. Like for example, right here, horizontal one, this piece is slightly above it, right? So I wanna make sure that I am in the right zone here. Now notice how I'm holding the pencil, okay? Now this is something that was mentioned by a viewer in a previous lesson that I made that um, it was commented that sometimes I hold the pencil like this or like this or something like that. Please don't feel the need to mimic how I hold the pencil. The reason I'm holding it in different ways is I want um, the pencil lead to be visible so you can see the line that I'm generating. So sometimes it forces me to hold my pencil in an awkward way like this, or like right now I'm holding it like this. Hold the pencil in a way that's comfortable for you, okay? Please. Okay, now this line is starting to drop down. And it's slightly below this intersection at one and seven. Continues this way. Maybe mine should be a little bit higher. Then it comes up like this, not nine, nine. Now I should, I should really number these lines. I've had so many students start off really good drawings only to mess up because they forgot a number. So let's make sure that we don't do that, right? All right, good. So all right, so let's go ahead and start this here. Now here I've got this large shape as the elephant's ear makes an appearance. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I got this point right. I could continue this way or I could work my way down. Because like I mentioned in, in the first lesson, the first drawing lesson video that I made, one of the issues that students have when they're learning to draw is where do I start, which way do I go, and where do I stop? And so some people will ask me, well, why would you go this way? Why not this way? What, what are the factors that are going, that are crossing your mind to make you make those decisions? Well, some of it is going to be just, I feel like drawing the head, I feel like drawing the ear, just you know, don't discount the aspect of emotion and what's going to get you motivated. Like, I want to draw this, I want to draw that. But sometimes there are practical reasons, all right? So what I think I want to do is I want to make sure that I've got this large shape established first. And then once I have that, I'll make sure that the ear is correct. Though I could have made the argument, I could just continue working from left to right and do the ear first and go this way. But instead, I think what I want to do is I want to corral the outside edge of this image first because I'm using the grid system and then I can go ahead and do all the details inside. Because I've seen many drawings um, end up with some mistakes because um, the grid system was numbered incorrectly or people weren't paying attention to where their lines were and they were one row off and it throws, throws things off. See, let's look right here at this front part. See how at horizontal three, this line is almost right in the middle, maybe slightly to the left, slightly. So that's another thing that we're doing, right? We're developing our observation skills, which is super important. And also what we're doing is we're using um, skills that we've developed in previous lessons, if you've been watching the previous lessons, Remember those line progressions that we did in the very first lesson? This is all a line progression, right? Up, down, drawing like a roller coaster kind of thing. Um, I know that those line progressions weren't the most fun, the most exciting, the most sexy assignment ever done, but the skills that they yield, they're worth it. Okay, and then this is at six. And so you get the idea of using the grid and where the uh, drawing is touching the grid. Actually, this should come out a little bit farther, huh? There we go. Okay. Good. Now I'm at a point here at horizontal eight where this is going to be going to the left of vertical 15. And then I've got the tip here of the elephant's uh, tusk. So I wanna be mindful now of the negative space. See this white space that's created? 
between the drawing and the grid itself. So I'm not only making sure that this is correct, I need to make sure that this is correct because they're, they're uh, interacting with each other, the negative space and the positive space, the object that we're drawing and the negative space around it or within it sometimes. Okay, and then this is here. So I'm gonna continue with the tusks or the, the trunk, I should say. So that looks about right, okay? I can continue down. So now I'm at nine, 10. I wanna make sure that everything's in the right spot. 14 here. So now I'm looking for where this spot's gonna be. It's almost in the middle between 13 and 14 on horizontal 10. Yep, that looks about right. Now, it's tempting just to draw a straight line, right? But this line has its own characteristics. There's these little bumps and slight line directions and stuff. You want to try to mimic those as best you can. Now, you'll get better at it, no doubt. But don't fall into the temptation of, oh, I'm just going to draw a straight line. Because they're not. One of the things, the main thing of this whole unit, like I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, is to develop our perception skills. The more that we do this, the better our perception skills are gonna get, and we can see slight differences that are occurring with our lines. Okay. So I'm going up now. I'm feeling more confident because now that I know where this is, it's almost working like a guide for me. It's helping me travel back up north on this drawing. This goes here. No, this is a little bit off. And some people have asked me, why do you use a mechanical pencil? Well, one of the reasons just because uh, since I'm drawing, you know, on camera, I don't want to have to stop to sharpen the pencil. I don't want to have to edit that. So it's convenient. But for drawing lines, for drawing simple lines like this that are uniform, meaning they're not thick or thin, they're just a uniform line, this is a perfect um, tool. But eventually, we will be wanting to shift from a mechanical pencil to a different material, different type of pencil, your classic wooden pencil. And we'll get to that later. But for right now, Wooden pencil, mechanical pencil, whatever you have. This is a little bit too high. Okay, so it looks like I'm in the right spot. Let's check it out. Horizontal 12. I'm sorry, a horizontal 6, a vertical 12. Looks like we're okay. Okay, we can see that silhouette of the elephant taking shape. I could continue this way, but I really want to tackle that ear. That ear is like, it's it's haunting me. So let's go back up where I were, where, or where I was. And notice how I'm holding the pencil. This isn't a comfortable position for me, but I'm doing it so the drawing can be seen as I generate it on camera. One of the things that I've noticed as an art teacher, and I didn't realize this until fairly recently, is how um, students are not being taught how to hold a pencil anymore. There isn't a uniform accepted way of holding a pencil. It's not being emphasized. And the reason I noticed this is I had some students with some really odd, to say the least, methods of holding a pencil lead. There were all sorts of different grips and there have been a ton of grips where I've seen where the student can't see where the lead is when they're drawing. And I remember once I was walking around in the classroom looking at people's drawings. I was trying to figure out what's going on, what's going on. Then I realized it and I said, oh, I get it. And they were like, what, what's going on? That's because I realized that some students, because of the way they're holding their pencil, they don't see where the tip is. And because they don't see where the tip is, they're not sure of where the drawing is or where the drawing's coming from, really. It's just there's this hand and the line is just coming. I don't know how you can draw without seeing where the pencil lead is. But anyway, that's enough of my rants. Drops down this way. So it looks like we're in good shape. So um, my suggestion 
if you were to um, do this drawing is do the perimeter of the elephant, making sure everything's in the right spot. Do the um, major landmarks like the ear and the, the um, tusks and the, the legs and all that stuff. Really tempting to place the eye. That's a major detail. I'll go ahead and place that eye real quick. The eye exists between 14 and 15 and between 4 and 5, so it's going to be somewhere around here. So this is going to be a little bit trickier now because I've got all these lines here and that eye, if I just look at that eye, it's kind of like just floating in the middle, okay? Or kind of like above the middle, I should say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this larger shape right here, establish that, and then I'll put the eye in the negative space. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Between 14 and 15 and 4, so around here, this eye is about, or this shape near the eye is over here. It has all these lines that feather this way. So when you do this drawing, you want to do as much of the specific details as possible. I'm kind of scribbling it in, but the more specific your lines can be, it's really going to help you. Now that I have that, this negative space is obviously where this eye is going to exist. This curves this way. And that's going to force me not to make it too big. And then there's these um, the bags under the elephant's eye. Not enough sleep. It was probably on its cell phone all night long like my students, but we won't get into that. Finish that. And then some lines above. So we're okay here, right? And so what you wanna do is go square by square. I'll do just a few here. Line here, here. And I know this is gonna be, you know, a lot of work. But you'll be so satisfied with yourself and with the progression that you're making if you make the effort. Some lines up here. So you're going to want to go cell by cell, making sure that everything's where it should be. And you're going to find that things are going to work out. So that's the approach you should take with the elephant. Cell by cell making sure that the drawing is in the right spot, touching where the grid is in the right spot, and basically making a connect the dots and go cell by cell, and you should work out okay.